Hi, this is Craig Resnick coming to you from the 2022 ARC Advisory Group Orlando Forum. With me today, today is my special guest, John Krajewski, who is the Vice President of Product uh, Product Management at Aviva. How are you doing today, John? Doing great, Craig. Thanks for having me. Well, g g glad you're here, and uh, it's great to have you again after certainly uh, all we've been through for the last uh, two and a half years. Um, obviously, one th common theme of the last two and a half years, besides the pandemic, has been uh, digital transformation. I know that's certainly something that's near and dear to your heart and Aviva's heart. So give me some of the examples of some of your digital transformation strategies that you've been doing the, you know, over the last uh, two and a half years and, and ask some specific examples of how you're implementing that with your customers. Sure. Uh, you know, we've done research in this area and about 89% of our customers are actually investing in digital transformation to accelerate uh, their sustainability objectives and the things that they're working on there. Um, and around sustainability, you know, very often they have a lot of things that need to change their processes, they need agility, they need access to different types of capabilities. So we've been working not only to make that uh, available to them on our cloud platform, which is uh, Aviva Connect, um, but also been working uh, significantly to to help them to achieve those objectives. Okay. Now, have you had like, if we, if we talk about like some of your company's most re recent solutions that support things, let's say like artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and, and machine learning and, and how do these capabilities, you know, supplement, you know, your existing products and solutions, especially, you know, you certainly have a lot of uh, lo long time customers. So how are they able to leverage, uh, leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning with their existing solutions? And, you know, and because I mean, they all have like everybody else, they have endless amount of data, maybe maybe too much data, but they certainly need some tools to better effectively leverage that data and manage that data. There have been a, a number of different mechanisms that we're working with to help uh, our customers obtain their objectives by using technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, some specific examples of that would be uh, our unified supply chain capabilities have been extended with a uh, schedule assistant AI that we are bringing together. This allows our petrochemical customers to run different schedules in advance and shorten what would other ta otherwise take many, many uh, uh, days or even hours to complete down to seconds and they're able to optimize their, their crude flows and things like that. Um, other examples of things that we're doing is that we're making uh, the information that they have available readily accessible for things like predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics through our Insight platform, uh, which is also part of Aviva Connect. Um, so this allows them to either do anomaly detections or to do certain specific tests against specific pattern recognitions that they have with their data um, in those areas. Uh, we're extending the link to data platforms like Pi System and Aviva Data Hub to be able to participate in those different types of AI um, and algorithms and mechanisms. And clearly everything I said above also is part of our strategy of making it ubiquitous, ubiquitously accessible through Aviva Connect and the cloud. Yeah, you know, one of the things that certainly we've also witnessed a shift, you know, certainly if people are going more from paying for things from CapEx to OpEx and looking at things like subscriptions, for example. Uh, tell me how Aviva is addressing that whole CapEx to OpEx shift and what type of programs you offer for uh, subscri handling subscriptions from your customers. So a few years back, uh, Aviva came out with a pretty in innovative program that we call Aviva Flex, which basically created one sort of currency across our entire portfolio. So our customers could move between them so that they would buy flex credits and then they could utilize those flex credits to virtually anything on our portfolio. Now we began that several years ago and we've had a lot of successes, but we don't consider ourselves to be done and we continue to innovate there. Uh, small examples would be how uh, with the OSI acquisition bring in there. Now all of the OSI products are available on flex. So any of our existing customers which are utilizing flex immediately now have access to all of that OSI technology without us having to do a lot of deep integrations or some technical differences there. Um, other aspects of things that we're doing will be to uh, make more uh, whole packages together available as part of Flex. So uh, instead of having a piece in part on what this, 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 and this, uh, one of the programs that we're initiating is called the Viva Operations Control, which takes all of the tools that are be useful in the day of the life of an operations uh, individual, accessible at their fingertips, all in the same program that we call Flex. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because you're you're introducing Flex to a lot of the people who you've known for many years on the OT side of the business, people who have gone back and you, you know, were buying perpetual licenses of InTouch, you know, for, for many, many years, for example. 
Now with ITOT convergence, you're dealing more with people that have an IT background and may not be quite as familiar with Aviva. How do you, how do you essentially educate those people in IT and, and give them the same level of comfort and trust that you, that you have established for many years with the OT side of the business? You know, I think that the history that we've had with our OT type customers helped to build the foundation with that. But as a, some of the initiatives that we're undergoing, one of them that we refer to internally as enterprise visualization, we take them to market as products we call unified operations centers. Virtually in every one of those engagements, they tend to be an IT buyer. It's not an OT buyer. It tends to be sitting on the business networks. They're not sitting on the process control networks. They tend to want to make these accessible to a large number of people, whether they be on-premise solutions or accessible through the cloud. This has required us to understand a bit more deeply about what the IT buyer is expecting, little differences between how you manage the software, how you how you actually pay for the software, and mm -hmm. those types of things. And we've we've had to deepen those relationships. And so while clearly I, the IT buyer were part of some of the OT products we were focusing on, um, but this isn't something that you know I would say for me individually who has kind of come through this, the Wonderwear lineage into Aviva. When you look at uh, the t organizations like OSI Soft, they often actually already have those relationships in place, and so that's and these cases, when we talk about enterprise visualization and the Pi system, they actually work very complementary because mm -hmm. they take a lot of the data off that OT layer, bring it up to the business layer through the Pi system, and then utilize enterprise visualization to put a clear picture together and aggregate it with all the other types of IT and ET information, ET being um, <laughs> engineering, engineering technology, technology and IT being uh, well, information, information technology. technology. <laughs> you know, one, one of the things that, you know, as we certainly talk to you know, you, um, we're talking to customers, many of which are your customers as well. They have a number of challenges, certainly going in 2022. You know, a lot of times it's supply chain, a lot of times certainly it's issues with, uh, you know, with inflation, workforce. Are there other challenges that uh, some of you, you're seeing with some of your customers as you're, as you're talking to them for 2022? You know, I've... Um... I've talked a lot about what I've referred to yeah. as the automation maturity model. And I've even heard even a couple of times today in this uh, sessions today, how you have to move people, process, and technology together. Now, I believe we've done a fantastic job as Aviva of being able to provide on the technology front, but our mm -hmm. customers are still going to have those issues on the people and the process side. Mm -hmm. So specifically, you know, our customers are constantly telling me that they're, they're struggle, having struggles with staffing positions, very often getting the skills into the locations that they need those skills in there, um, or being able to retain the people that are on their staff that have the knowledge inside of their heads about their processes and then watching them leave their organization or take new opportunities. That could be a significant struggle. And so we've mm -hmm. invested to be able to help them in the area of being able to facilitate either the upskilling of existing staff uh, through things that we have like Aviva Teamwork and the abilities of being able to bring people together or things like the training and unified training and learning capabilities that we have that have been building on top of our traditions of things like OTS, but extending them with things like augmented reality and virtual reality mm -hmm. to, to be able to help them upskill those individuals. Mm -hmm. I mentioned there was people, process, and technology. So I've covered the technology. I, I basically said the technology is what we, what we do, the people we've got covered. So when it comes to the process, when I look at uh, a lot of the things that are happening around cloud and mm -hmm. IT and hybrid cloud and what it means to a lot of people, one of the major uh, things that I believe is going to change is just the way that people tend to have their processes for adopting technology, right? right? So they probably already have processes for how they procure a piece of uh, a hardware or a server, where they put the server. Well, now they're going to have to understand how this data go between the process control networks and the business networks and potentially up to cloud and distribute them. They're going to have to have all the processes in place and the checklist to ensure that it's meeting their cybersecurity policies policies and that everything's in place um, and you know constantly not stepping on each other's by pushing down global policies and so I think the cybersecurity and the processes of being able to put those systems together will probably cause some people a challenge and so that we've worked and tried to get ahead of that by not only ensuring that we have all the appropriate cybersecurity accreditations and uh, authorities that are necessary for our systems that we provide them the proper documentation and, and deployment information so that they can move more quickly into those spaces yeah, yeah no, that's 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 really critical. I'm really, we're, we're glad to hear you doing it, and I know it's a you'll be very very successful. Certainly, is help helping them, especially with the cybersecurity challenges. Hey, John, thanks very much for being here today. Thanks again for having me. We love being here. And this is uh, Craig Resnick again, coming to you from the 2022 ARC Advisory Group Orlando Forum. Thanks so much. Have a great day.